Hi, room 10. It is math time again. The last time we did math, we talked about equal parts, equal parts of a whole. So for example, we had our whole cookie and we broke it into two equal parts. Well, we're going to talk about some more things that have to do with equal parts today. And the first thing I want to do is that if you have a whole that has been separated into two equal parts. If it's two equal parts, you call those halves. Let's all say that word, halves. Here it is right here. It's also over here on our word bank, in our word bank, I should say. One half singular, two halves. Notice how the L is silent on that word. So we have two halves. Same thing if we're even with our rectangle shape. If it's a whole broken into two parts, we call those halves. One half, two halves, and they do have to be equal parts. So if we are looking at that, I'm gonna go back to our cookie. If I'm only talking about one part one of the two halves. I can see I have one of two parts. One of the two parts. Would you like to know there's another way to word that, or another way to write that? One of two parts. Wait a minute. Does that look familiar to anybody? What are those called? That's right. We're talking about fractions. I wrote that really messy. We're talking about fractions. Now, in first grade, we're not even worried about you knowing the word fractions. You don't even have to worry about writing them this way. You just have to be able to recognize one of two equal parts. And those are halves. One half is one of two equal parts. Now today, in your math lesson, it's another workbook page, you are not gonna do this page. I'm not even sending it to you. It's not necessary. We're gonna start with the back side. So this is what you're gonna see. There's some more information here about halves for you and your grown up to look at. Right here for numbers one and two, it says write how many equal parts make up the whole. So you're gonna look at this figure and we're gonna decide how many equal parts are there for one and two? For three and four, it tells you to draw lines to show two equal parts. Then write how many halves you have. So you're gonna draw the lines, make sure you get equal parts. Talk to your grown up. How many halves make up a whole? You can figure that out. The next page, some more that's a similar. Write how many equal parts make up the whole. Now here, for numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10, read the directions. Every year, my kids, my students, my first graders make a mistake on this because they don't read the directions. A half of each shape is missing. Draw the missing half. A lot of people just wanna put a line in there to split it into halves. We're not splitting it into halves. You are taking it and you are drawing the missing half. So you're gonna draw the missing half. For numbers 11 and 12, color half of each shape, write how many parts are shaded. So what that means is if, I'm gonna draw my cookie again, and it is split into two equal parts, I am going to shade one of those two equal parts, one of two parts. So that's what you're gonna be doing on 11 and 12. Then back here, you have two story problems that you are gonna answer, and for the hot problem, it says Jenna is eating half of an orange, Samantha is eating the other half of the same orange. Jenna says she has less than Samantha. Can she be right? Think about this mathematically. Don't worry like about the sizes of the portions. We're gonna assume they have exactly half. It is an equal part. Okay, so today, we learned and we expanded on our equal parts. 
We know what a whole is. We know what equal parts are. If it's two equal parts, they are halves. One of those two equal parts is a half. We can say one of two parts. We could write it as this way, one half, one of two parts. And what we're working on is really fractions. I will see you next time. Bye.